Hi, and welcome to episode 72 of the Codependent Knitters. This is my friend Dawn. That's my friend Lisa. <laughs> and we are predominantly a knitting podcast. Um, we've been doing, how long have we been doing this now? I was just thinking of that today. Um, six years? Is this our sixth? I think. Wow. We've had a long relationship. <laughs> no, get more. We started. We started the Ravelry group in May 2017. Wow. So seven, seven years. Wow. Fantastic. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just thinking of that the other day. I'm like, how long have we been doing this? Because somebody asked me, I'm like, ah, I don't know. We just do whatever once in a while for fun and it's good. So yeah, very good. Yeah. So yeah, so what do you want to start with today? Well, I'm, I'm going to a retreat in two weeks. I know, that's exciting. You're going to have such I'm, a blast. I'm going to the Make on the Lake retreat um, on Hecla Island in Manitoba. So um, Hecla Island is in a provincial park. So this is quite um, remote. Like it's, it's two hours from Winnipeg, two hour drive. And uh, it's out in a, in, in the, in nature <laughs> there's in the summer there's golf courses and there's hiking trails and all kinds of but um be nice I'm really, yeah i'm really looking forward to it so i'm going because um my sister marianne decided to go and my friend shirley from the pot um also was interested in going and i so i wouldn't normally go it is kind of far or whatever but i thought oh no i, I think it's yeah. wonderful I think it's great i think yeah, yeah. that would be good and you know what? The the rate is ridiculously reasonable compared to comparable like retreats. Yeah. Like the fee includes food and whatever. So um and I did sign up. They have classes. So I did sign up for it's called um botanical, I think it's botanical ice dyeing. So oh nice. That'll be kind of interesting. That'll be good. Yeah. yeah. That'll be yeah. So that, that's coming fast. So I'll have some info from that. Um, I know people have commented um, the one giveaway in our Ravelry group where we ask people to leave us um, comments, tell us what they'd yeah. like to see. Um, they they like footage and stuff from yarn shows, whatever. Mm -hmm. Retreats are a little tricky because I, I don't want to take pictures of too much of other people not knowing if they want to be shown right i have to be sensitive yeah. to that no exactly so, yeah so but i will um take some footage and um maybe i don't know we'll see maybe oh i don't know what the internet will be like out there i guess they'll have hotel wi-fi uh but we'll see what we can do maybe we can go live on instagram or something i don't know but marianne and i can record something no um, go, go for it that yeah. would be awesome yeah and heather from timber yarns is coming with me so it's gonna be right. a lot of fun yeah. That'll be awesome. So that's the Make on the Lake retreat. Uh, we have a crochet along going on, and I have yeah. not been working on it. I haven't either. It's scaring me. Yeah. So it's um, the crochet till May. I, I have been crocheting, not on my granny hmm. square sweater. Um, so I am working on the Isla granny square sweater, and I've done a couple of the squares. There's one. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't it cute? That's really and nice. A friend told me about this. It's a granny square blocker. So it's this pegboard. Oh, it comes with a yeah, yeah. That's ingenious. Yeah. It comes with different sizes, like heights of pegs. Mm -hmm. You can peg them in for whatever size you need. And then you can you can make a stack because you have the pegs sticking up. So you can stack your granny squares to the same size. That's Which awesome. Is then when you sew them together, you don't have some that might be not quite the same dimensions. So but I that thought would that even was clever. That would even work for any of, like, it doesn't have to be crocheted granny squares. It could be any type of square. Yeah, it could be. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, so I got it from Amazon. I think all I did was Google granny square blocker, something like that. Um, if I can find the link to the same one, I can put it in our notes below um we are not i don't have any amazon affiliation so there's nothing like that 
Uh, it was just a handy thing that a friend had, and I thought that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So what I have been working on crochet though, because I don't know how it came up, but talking with friends and I pulled out my granny square blanket. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's bigger than I thought it was. Like I was kind of way back here. So I put this much more around it and it's nice. big. Holy Hannah. Yeah. Nice. So, so I put a bit more on it and then I pulled in a bunch of the ends because there were a bunch of ends. Nice. And I just, I had collected a bunch of scraps and mini skeins. So I've just got a big pocket here of different ones. That's cool. I, um, a typical mini skein will not go all the way around it anymore. So um, a couple of the rounds, I just used two colors that were similar and no one can tell because they're on totally other ends of the blanket. Right, yeah. But that's been really fun. And so I'm using a rectangular granny square and um, I have the pattern on Ravelry, but just, you know, you can just search granny square blanket and there's tons of patterns and big, or you can, if you know how to make a granny square, you can make your own. You just keep going around and around. So, okay. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are you wearing? I was going to ask you what you're wearing. I, um, I did a trilogy test for this bird knits. Um, it's made with Jameson Shetland Heather Aaron, which is discontinued, I believe. Um, it's green. It's not gray. It is green. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's warm because we're cold here again. It's cold. Yeah, yeah you got, mm -hmm. you guys got snow. Yeah, we got more snow and it's really like it's freezing. It's cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. You've got nice warm sweaters to wear. Yeah, so I what have, are you wearing? I finished my field sweater. It looks so this, great. Thanks. This is a field sweater by Camilla Bad. And can I stand up and show you guys? Hang on. I love it. You can see the bottom hem. That's good. I love it. The only thing is, the arms were small, and I haven't looked at the pattern schematics, but um, you can see it's kind of snug. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was partway down and tried it on that I realized. So I think the pattern had decreases every seventh row, like just all mm -hmm. the way. I tore it out or tore it back and did um, every 10 rows for like six times. And then every, I just kept track of in my notes and I used different colored stitch markers for how many. Um, yeah. rows. So I did 10 rows, then ninth row, then eighth row, whatever. So, but otherwise, mm -hmm. and it's not wet blocked yet. So no. that will probably, okay. it'll have a bit of give. It is cotton and wool. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll get a bit more um, space. Oh, okay. I, yeah. did, I did steam block it. But look at Very this. Cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This She's done a lot cool. of those things now. Yeah, there's a lot of there's like a vest, a hat, mitts, cardigan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Um and I didn't do the collar was uh a longer collar. And oh, okay. I think it was regular it was regular rib, but my regular ribbing always looks kind of icky. So I did a twisted rib. Nice. And I, like and I did it shorter than it called for. I think I did 10 rounds. Okay. Um and then I did twisted rib on my cuff and nice. on the bottom, on okay. the bottom hand. yeah nice very good that, I look great. The, yarn, the yarn is holst garn coast which is roughly half and half woolen cotton and i haven't weighed this but i had a cone plus i had bought um a pack of mill of uh, ends like assorted mm -hmm. millen um that totaled 200 grams so I'll put it in my Ravelry project, how much I used total, but I held it double. So Coast, Coast by Holst Garn, Color Olive, which is, I don't know, I don't think it's olive. It's very sagey, but yeah, the colors, the colors accurate today. My, my light in here is good and it looks really good. I love it. No, it looks really good on you. Oh, thank you. I'm really happy. And this is going to the retreat with me. So that's my first defo. <laughs> nice nice 
Do you have what another uncle? Because I don't have any. You don't have any? I don't okay. have any. I have a couple. So I finished, because it's been a while since we've been here. Yeah. I knit. Hang on. I finished my, I call them my Bala socks. <laughs> so right. last summer, aren't they pretty? This is a beautiful uh, commer commercial yarn. So last summer when we went to Bala for a little camp, a uh, little vacation with Lisa and Adrian and I and our friend Tracy's, yeah. Adrian yeah. and I stopped at True North on the way and I convinced her to buy a ball of this yarn and I bought one too. And I said, we'll be matching socks because they're colors she likes. So this yarn, it was a 50 gram ball and it's mm -hmm. drops, um, no, yeah, drops fable. And the color is 677. I don't know if it has a name, it's 677. And I used 45 grams out of the 50 gram ball. Ooh. So I, that's with contrast, yeah. So, I mean, I got a pair of, I'm an eight and a half foot uh, shoe size. So I used contrasting heel and toe, which is just a navy regia. Okay, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's just, it was perfect. So, I mean, if you were knitting this with a 50 gram ball, I don't like a really long leg on my sock, but you could just weigh your main skein as long as you were gonna use contrast for heel, toe and cuff. Mm -hmm. And when you get to about half the skein, like even if your toe has to be longer in the other color, but then you'll know you've got that much left or wind it into two to begin with, but really you don't need to, you can just weigh it as you go. So that's one sock I have, or pair. <laughs> there is another one finished. <laughs> nice. And there, uh, this is, you know, it's a woolier wool, but I love it. And I love the design. Then, Nancy Wheeler, Knit Sip Happy, uh, came out with okay. a, a DK sock pattern. And I thought it was really adorable and I wanted to make it, but I didn't have a yarn that I thought would show off the texture. All my DK okay. sock yarn, like nylon, is very um, speckled or variegated or whatever. So I thought I'm gonna try holding fingering double and making DK socks. So that's the first time I've done DK socks holding fingering double. Okay. And it worked, worked beautifully. Yeah. There's my sock. Oh, nice. And so it has this pattern, two repeats of it down the front of the sock, down the top of the foot. And it's a little hard to see on a skinny sock blocker, but it just has one single twisted stitch down the back of, Very the, cool. of the ankle. And uh, again, this was a 100 gram skein of yarn. And the yarn is... I don't know if I have the tag. I just had it here. But I can tell you what it is. It is Schweden, Schwedenrot. Schwedenrot yarns. And it's their luxury sock yarn. I got it at um, the Knitting Loft in, in just two years ago. So I don't know if they still carry Schwedenrot yarns. But um, I think they might be. I don't know where they're nice. from. And the color is Sage Vintage. So uh, it's kind of almost a, a pale bluish green, but it is greenish, mm -hmm. it does lean green. And it's just got little tiny flecks of other things. So it's very gently speckled and it worked beautifully held double. I did the size where you cast on 48 stitches okay. and I did use a 2.75 millimeter needle because for me, I'm a looser knitter um, yep. and, and it's perfect. So yeah, love them. It looks beautiful. It, it looks really pretty. It, Sometimes you nice. scary with the speckle and a pattern, right? Oh, these are nice. They're subtle. Mm -hmm. And I haven't worn them yet because I was saving them for the podcast. <laughs> there you go. So that's another pair of finished socks. Socks, socks, sweater, and okay. I have something new that Ooh. I did. I got a weaving loom a couple of years ago from a friend who was selling it. It's an Ashford rigid heddle loom. It's, I think the frame is 22 or 24, it must be 24 inches, but the, the weaving area, the, the heddle size is 20 inches. So that's as big as I can weave on it. That's as wide, right? And then plus when you weave, 
when you take it off the loom, it sucks in a bit. Plus you have some shrinkage when you wash. So um, depending on what I'm weaving with 18 to 20 inches, but on that loom. So uh, I finally went and got a private lesson from my friend Monica, who is a fabulous weaver. And I wove a scarf. Nice. Do you want to see? I do want to see. Now, I hope you can see. I'm going to hold it like over itself so you can see the colors here. Okay, so I used um, Cascade 220 Superwash Wave. Okay. Which uh, looks like a hand spun, so you can see. Oh, right? nice. But it changes colors throughout the skein. So I used it for the warp and the weft. So the warp is what goes up and down your loom. Mm -hmm. And so you can see I go from teal to blue to kind of a grayish blue to the brown across, mm -hmm. like lengthwise. And then I used another skein of the same color to do the weft across. So in different parts of the scarf, some places you can see the teal a little more brightly. Um, some places you can see the blue purpley blue. That is so more. cool. Yeah. And I did a fringe on the bottom. I didn't twist it. I just did a, uh, I knotted and then uh, I, you tie tiny little knots on the end of the yarn so it doesn't frail out. Right. Yeah. So it's so nice and it's soft. Mm -hmm. and Good. Yeah, so that's, my, that's my first weaving project. Nice. Oh, that's that so is cool. so cool. Yeah, so no, I would love to do that. Take a lesson with Monica. Ah, uh, Lisa, you should get to. um, you should get a loom like this, and it's so maybe I'll sad. borrow your little one. Maybe you could. And I can try it and see if I like it. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, I, I do, yeah. I do not have. I have not done a lot of knitting. I will admit it. I have a. We have a new family member here, a little four-legged fella, so he keeps me on my toes. Um. He actually likes to chase yarn balls. <laughs> we'll put so, a picture yeah. in of him. Yeah. So that's, yeah. He keeps me on my yeah. toes. He's been keeping me busy. He has a name. Yes, his name is Ryder. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, my daughter picked that out. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. Because our friend, uh, Vicky, her last name is Ryder. We kind of laughed about that. So, and yeah. he's a bull mastiff. Yep, he is a five-month-old, well, right now he's five months old, and he, he is a bull mastiff, which I had before. Uh, he's a different color. He's red with a black face. So, yeah, keeping me he's, busy. We went to puppy classes this morning. Run, run, run. <laughs> well, in other pet news, there's Shiloh. Yeah. Keeping me company today. We said goodbye to Ginger about two weeks ago. She... Yeah. Uh, she wasn't doing well health wise for the last few years and mm -hmm. the last couple months were rougher. She'd lost more weight. She was almost 20 years old. So, you know, what? it was nice to see her though. Yeah. When I was down, I got to see her. Yeah. Yeah. She was the sweetest cat. She was, uh, she hated Shiloh. She would growl and hiss at him, but never at us. She was, you know, you could cut her nails. She, was, she would just meow if she didn't like something. So oh, we right. won't hear uh yelly ginger won't, yelly ginger won't be interrupting us anymore <laughs> so we'll miss that but yeah house is a little bit quieter now with ginger gone yeah. so I and mean, you know i i try to convince the guys that we need another kitten but yeah i can't see that going over very well yeah. no ryan said at this point they're going to outlive us so we can't uh <laughs> but yeah <laughs> It's funny because people won't know how much Ginger um, would cry or talk to us because we cut a lot of it out. I oh. <laughs> she was loud, like scream loud when she yeah. wanted something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's funny. I'll miss that. Yeah, wow. me too. So this episode is um, dedicated to Ginger. Right. <laughs> to the things that keep us busy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just talked about a whole bunch of stuff. You talk about what's on your needles. I'll talk. Okay. So I'm making my mom a sweater. Uh, she bought the yarn at um, the Knitting Loft in Toronto at their Christmas, their Boxing Day sale that they have. And I, it's lovely. It's uh, 
what is it? Re, I never say this right. Re, de, re, rum, natura, gala, but how would you say that? Gilead? Yeah, it's Durer. I think people say Durerum, natura. Durerum, yeah. I don't so know. I, it's the, the um, loom pattern by Sari Nard, Nardlin. So it's really pretty. My mom chose it. Um, in the picture, it's usually just two colors. Oh, look at that. I got dog hair all over it. <laughs> so it's normally just two colors, but I added a third color here for the flowers. I just think it added a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. I put this on face on, sorry, Instagram recently. I just have like six more inches per sleeve to do and I'm done. So yeah, but it's it looks really good. It's uh, once it gets blocked, it'll be really soft and whatnot. Um, the one thing that I, I did that I love, I forget what sweater it was. I think it was one of the ones that I did from uh, Hohi, the, sim the super simple summer sweater. That one is where you, instead of just binding off in, um, in the ribbing, you knit one row all the way around and then you bind off the next row. I think it just gives it a little bit more of a nicer edge. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I don't have, I don't really have the patience to do the, uh, I don't know if you can see it because it's a hard color to see. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the patience to do tubular cast off. No. Um, I know my patience. <laughs> we will, we will put all the details about that pattern, et cetera, in the notes down below. Yeah. It's, um, it's a fabulous pattern, a really great, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and when you were speaking about bind off, when I did this, yeah. This bind off, right? With the twisted rib. Yeah. I actually turned and just bound off the other direction. I okay. bound off in pattern. So I did bind off like knit pearl, knit pearl, but I went the other direction. Um, and I find it, it looks, it's just less noticeable on the okay. right side. Nice. So yeah, Marianne did that one time and told me about it. And then I tried it and I've done it a few times. So I did that on the bottom and on the Wrists. I'm just writing that down because it sounds interesting. Yeah, give it a try. It's, I like it in ribbing. I can't remember if I've done it. No, I wouldn't have done it in a plain stocking no, stitch not. in the hand would roll, right? I, I don't yeah. usually have plain stocking stitch bottoms. Mm -hmm. So That's yeah, cool. I like it. Do you have other whips? I have um, another whip. Yeah, just one more. But it's, okay. it's, it's the one I was working on before. It was the um, Isabel Kramer Aldous. Okay, yeah. And that was the, um, the kind of the saddle shoulder where it comes straight and then it widens. So you showed still, us a lot. Yeah, I showed last time and I really haven't gotten much farther. Okay. So, so in our previous I, episode, episode yeah. 71, there's a lot more detail about that. Sweater. Yeah. Yeah. It just, okay. I haven't, yeah, I have to sit down and get ready to go to Sleeve Island, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, but that's really the only things that I've been working on. Uh, I I have a whip. Who would you that, got? Well, it is the Riptide Mitts. Oh yeah, yeah. By, by Jennifer Shields Tolan. All I have done is the cuff, so that doesn't show you much about the pattern. <laughs> I like but the back. It, so it, Jennifer Shields Tolan has a collection, a Riptide collection. There is a vest. She has just come out with a, uh, a summer tank top, mm -hmm. just really, there's mittens, there's a hat um, and a shawl that you can do a couple different ways. You can do it as like a skinny scarf or you can do oh, it nice. as a shawl. So, you know, I kind of, I like it when designers do that because it, it, it kind of speaks to more people. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I may not want, you know, the whole sweater, but this, I really like the vest. I've seen the vest. I like the vest. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, Jennifer or Jennifer, Andrea Mowry does that a lot too. Yes. And, she and does. it's great. The shift. Yeah. Then you have choice, right? So huh. Jennifer, Jennifer Shield Tol Shields, Jennifer Shields Tolan was giving away, um, the Riptide collection on Instagram oh, and yeah. so you could enter and you could tag someone and then both of you would win. So Marianne won and she tagged me. So we both nice. won the collection. So I'm starting with the mittens. 
and when you Lisa came to visit me in February you stayed here when you guys were in town for something and um you had a couple of really nice yarns with you that I got to feel and one of them was oh, yeah. uh, La Land DK by D Gilpin yes, so I ordered time. some I ordered some for this for these mitts and I'll probably have enough left to do the hat if I want but I need right? more yeah than I figured I'd yeah. get more on skein it is a fingerless mitten pattern, but I'm going to do a full mitt because. Oh, nice. I okay. Yeah. You, so you I can wanted, figure that. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I had enough. So this is 100% lamb's wool um, from Scotland. It is really nice. So that's if you. The, that's the yarn I'm doing my sweater out of. It's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's very nice. It's nice in the skein. It hasn't been washed yet. Um, so the lamb's wool is very soft. So if, if any of our viewers out there have been wanting to use a wool, like not a super wash and not sure, because a lot of them might be a little scratchier and I do not like scratchy wool. This is really nice. I would love to do a sweater in this. It's just. It's, it's nice. So it's really nice. Yeah. So I think this is a DK weight. And the color I bought is Storm Petrol 1910. And that'll all be in the notes below. So yeah, I'm really, um, I'm really loving this. I, so now that I finished my sweater, I'm going to get working on these. Right. Those finished. And they have a lot of colors. So the Knitting Loft carries it. That's where I ordered from. Uh, there were a lot of colors. Actually, this, initially I was going to do kind of a gray. And then I did go ahead and look at each color. And, you, you know, you click on it and then it gives you a bigger yeah. image. And this was the very, I think it was the last one. And I thought, oh, I love it. So it's like, I don't know if you could see it. I held it. It's like a dark, I don't want, when I get close, it blows out. It's not that bright. It's a dark yeah. navy teal. Yeah, no, it's really pretty. Beautiful. There's about the color it is. It's quite dark. Yeah, so I love it. Um, And I Marianne's working on the shawl. I do like the shawl. And I mm -hmm. think she's working, the designer's working on a V-neck version of the vest oh nice um okay. it would be a great pattern to put into just a sweater it's got like yep. um these i don't know kind of like cables it's hard to describe i would say look it up but <laughs> down the front that go all the way down the front yep. um and that would look cute in a sock too that's true and you could even true. put that in a sock um speaking of socks i have a sock whip well, i have several but this is this is what i started recently and it's just helical knitting these two lovely yarns oh I'm gonna, oh that's pretty i'm gonna put it on a sock blocker so you can appreciate it a little bit more i only have one sock done there's my hair all over it so there you go that's like so the sweater the tree ring sweater yeah looks good the yarns this is malabrigo ultimate sock and the color is Gloria 736 Gloria. It's a very, very speckly pinky very purple, pretty. pink purple everything. And then I had it, I got it from Little Red Mitten. And while I was at the mitten, I was looking for something to knit with it. And I landed on the Leona Roxy Basics Antique Aubergine. That's Just nice. Perfect. That looks really good. Yeah. So I didn't, I wanted to be able to um, see the speckles. So what I'm doing is two rows of the speckled yarn and one round, not okay. row, round of the aubergine. And I'm yeah. just heel knitting it. So my heel toes and cuffs are the regular, like the main color. And mm -hmm. I did this little two by two, I don't know if you can see it, two by two twisted rib. Nice. Um, I just cable the two knit stitches every fifth round. I call it Noelle's fancy rib because she's the first one that I saw who did that and I loved it. Um, so <clears throat> I didn't use the pattern, but I all I do is when I get to, so when you change color. So I do the aubergine round and when I get to my first stitch of the aubergine, I slip it. And then the next stitch is where I start the speckle. And then I so slip the first stitch of the speckle and do a second round. And then I can start my aubergine. So that way you don't get like it's jogless. Mm -hmm. 
no okay. left, like jogs. And if you look at the inside, so it does travel a little bit because you're always moving over a stitch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can see here, <laughs> there's where my. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't want to do helical, you could just do it up um, the inside. Like just do it like a twist them inside, but it was no problem doing helical. And I didn't go up a needle size. I mean, I didn't change much. I just made sure that when I slipped that first stitch and started and had to carry up the next yarn that I did a little bit loosely, not tight so that it had, there's lots of stretch. Give, yeah. It doesn't, yeah. Doesn't pucker. So I just have to start the second sock and I've used less than half of the skein of the 20 gram mini. So oh, nice. Um, okay. I bought two just in case, but there's lots. And actually, I'm going to have lots of this yarn left because I only used a third of what I normally would, I guess, or two thirds. So I'll have enough for another something. Well, something, but, something. Something, something. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Aren't those fun? Those are, I, already, I like. I mentioned my granny square blanket. Oh. Those are the only whips. Those are the only whips that I brought to show today. Because I haven't done progress on a couple of the other socks. I have yeah. Remembrance's Pottery Cozy Quilt Socks. Yeah. Those are on the go. And I have another pair of socks that's two colors. And, oh, but we got some new sock yarn you and I both ordered. Do you have yours there? I have mine. I, we ordered sock yarn from Twin Oaks Farm. Oh, okay. Mine isn't. Okay. Sorry. Duh. So this is, this is light gray, she called it. And it's, um, it's by Harry Alphonse and friends. So she's a sheep farmer. Uh, it is 70% wool, 30% mohair, three ply sock. See, the only difference is you're saying sock yarn. Yeah, because she, she called it a three-ply sock yarn. Did you order it in sock yarn? Oh. <laughs> sock or sweater. I'm thinking sweater. I got sweater yarn. I got the yarn for my sweater. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's gorgeous. So it's, it's incredible. It's sock weight. There are 400 yards per 100 grams. So. Oh, it's so squishy. It squishy. It's not itchy. Like, I could no. wear a sweater in this. Even though it's mohair, mohair sometimes is picky, but this is really nice. When I saw the picture, funny story, when I saw the picture, I emailed her and I was thinking, oh, I want some, I want some. So I actually ordered, I ordered six skeins. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I need, I need six. And I'm like, da, da, da. And then I started doing math and I'm like, no, no, I don't need six. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I don't so need I six. I have to call her back. <laughs> I only need four. <laughs> well, yeah. um, I'm excited because the retreat, the Make on the Lake retreat. Oh, nice. Uh, one of the, there's a couple of um, businesses that are organizing it. Okay. One of the organizers is Longway Homestead, who is a sheep farmer. And one of the organizers is Pearl and Hank. Pearl, P-U-R-L. And I she has... She has a uh, brick and mortar shop and she does a lot of leather goods like shawl cuffs and stitch markers. Oh, nice. And okay. That's good. Yeah. And she carries yarn and she's a natural dyer. So they have collaborated on some new yarn and colors that they are going to debut. Nice. And That'll I'm just cool. hoping, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping I love it. <laughs> I sure. They posted right. pictures. I love the colors in the photo. Um, okay. And yeah, we'll be able to pick up some of that yarn. I'm so yeah, excited. when I saw the photo of this, like you showed it, you sent it to me. It was just, I have, yeah, isn't that pretty? I knew you would like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've got those. So I'm actually going to wind this, wind up. I bought two skeins. I'm going to wind one up and bring it as, um, to knit some socks on my trip. Nice. And then... I have a new cast on. I finished my field sweater actually yesterday and then steamed mm -hmm. it. So I'm like, I got to start something new while I'm, while I make up my mind. Cause otherwise I get stuck in what should I cast on? I yeah. haven't cast on. I've done, um, I've started a gauge swatch. So I'm going to knit 
the, um, I always want to say puddle jumping. It's not. Dune Drifter. <laughs> Dune Drifter uh, t-shirt by okay. um, Wool and Pine Designs. And I've loved it since it came out last year. And I had ordered yarn specifically for it. So I ordered this one ply from Jelen. That's the color. Okay. Nice. It's her Bella, it's her Bella base. And it's 75% merino, 15% cashmere. That's pretty. I like that color. 10% silk. The color's called Angelina. It's gorgeous. So the sweater has, um, it's a little t-shirt and it's got uh, a, a larger lace pattern band all the way across the bottom. And it's knit mm -hmm. vertically, like it's knit sideways. So. Oh, okay. So okay. Like, That'll be very, cool. Yeah. Very new to me. So gauge is going to be different because I don't have to worry about gauge for width because I'll be knitting right vertically. Yeah. Width will be, yeah. So, but I so will row I be important. Measure. Row height. Yes. And I mean, I'll be able to measure, um, and I'll have to, um, it won't stretch as much that way. Right. Cause I'll be going the yeah. other way. It tends to stretch. Like, look how much it's going to stretch from side, yeah. like when it's vertical. So I do want a tighter gauge on it. It calls for 24. I may end up going with a next up size and mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, so I've started swatching. I swatched with a 3.0 and I can't find any open 3.25 tips. So I swatched with the 3.0 and now I'm just swatching with a 3.5 millimeter. Okay. So, so I've All got right. uh, a little cake here for swatching and then I want to cast that on. Um, maybe bring that with me on my trip. But I'm excited because I've been wanting to knit that t-shirt for a while. That one's, yeah, it's a pretty t-shirt. It's kind of, cat. you can do anything with it. Well, and I've been really distracted by the weaving. So for my birthday, my birthday was in January and Ryan heard me talking to Monica about weaving because yeah. she was weaving some beautiful blankets at the time. She, and yeah. yeah, and you need a bigger loom. So um, basically he heard me talking and then he I said something about a, a bigger loom and he said, well, would you like a bigger loom? I'll buy you one for your birthday. So, okay. So we ordered it. We ordered it through Little Red Mitten because they don't normally stock a uh, 48 inch loom. Yeah. Uh, it's a rigid heddle. Um, and I ordered this stand that comes with it. So it's like about the size of a small piano. <laughs> it's, it's a good sized uh, machine and I haven't assembled it yet. It came um, all apart, obviously. And yeah. I uh, wax the wood. So I have to treat the wood first and then we will assemble it. But I do still have my smaller loom so I can make more scarves. Nice. Lisa, I've already bought two quantities for blankets, even though I have yarn in my stash that I thought, oh, I can weave this into a blanket. So basically I think I need um, for bulky weight because one blanket quantity is bulky weight. I need nine skeins and then it's like seven or eight if it's worsted and I think six or seven, I think six for fingering weight. Um, now that depends how long I make it, but mm -hmm. I can only make it, um, will it be less than 48 inches. My weaving space is the biggest I can go with is 48 inches. Mm -hmm. So apparently you can get a uh, double bracket for to add an extra heddle that you can make it doubly wide. That's way too complicated for me right now. And um, a 48 inch, even if it comes down right. to like 40, six 44 inches wide is a great throw size it'll still right? keep you warm yeah it'll yeah. still keep you warm so mm -hmm. and the other thing you can do you can weave you can weave and then make things with the fabric like people sew dresses with their woven mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice so, nice i'm i'm just watching, yeah i'm following a bunch of instagrammers and i'm all um uh -uh. eyes like spin like in the cartoon Ooh, i get hypnotized by all the weaving <laughs> Ooh, look at that that's good that's good yeah so have you you've got your mom's sweater your sweater do you have anything else on the needles right now you know that's it that's yeah. it yeah well you want to get that sweater done for your mom too so she can yeah that's pretty much the only one the one i've been working on the most so yeah once like i said there's only like that much left to do per side it'll be done 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to show you this really cute yarn I got from Heaven is Handmade. Nice. I popped in there because I, I wove that scarf out of Superwash Wave. Um, they carry it and I popped in just to see what colors they have because I have two skeins that don't mm -hmm. totally go with each other but I thought if they had a color that it would go with then I could weave yeah. another scarf um, which they didn't they only had a few colors in stock they're waiting for more but I did find this little beauty so it's this flotta sock oh that is so cute look at, I like the look colors at yeah. oh it's twisted too yeah. Nice. I like that. Very cool. Yeah. So these will be adorable socks. And then of course my brain now just goes to, I could weave with it. I could weave a scarf using this. Right. <laughs> totally. I can weave, I can weave with anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, created a monster. One of, one of the most exciting things. Monica has woven a bunch of blank blankets using Briggs and Little. And oh. when you, when you wash them and then you brush them, to sort of fluff them up and it fills in all the spaces and they're yeah. actually they're actually nice they're they're not super scratchy they're nice they're tolerable for me and i have two to three bags of Briggs and Little that was my my given to my mom and then i took it and every mm -hmm. ball is a different color so i want to use that and then you know it's once you get the technique, it's kind of hard to do a shitty job. Like, really. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> it's not bad. Like, it's just with my scarf, my um, my edges were really loose. So you can see here, right? There's your woven edge where it loops around. And my you know edges what, though? Were... They, look, they look good. Like, they you look why? good. But, yeah. They look good because I went along the entire edge and pulled in the mm -hmm. ends pulled in the weft because some of them it was wonky and it was too wonky like I wouldn't have worn it but I just thought you know what it's worth the time like if you dropped a stitch on a sweater you wouldn't oh, leave exactly. it exactly you pick it up right so I thought I'm yeah. just gonna it's worth the time so I just did that while I was watching tv and now mm -hmm. I've watched a couple of videos and I know how to do better and yeah so that's that. that's good that's um, awesome I got this it's like 200 grams ish of hand spun from my friend Jane Oh my goodness, that's pretty. Isn't this beautiful? You can make a scarf with that. You could weave it. <gasps> oh, I, yeah. Or I could weave it in a blanket. Like then I would have, right? Then I'd have a forever. Mm -hmm. So initially I thought um, I would use it as a, uh, as color work in a sweater, but there's quite a bit of it. And I thought, you know what? Sweaters may not i may not wear a sweater as for as many years as i would keep a blanket so right yeah it's just this is the color and it's just gorgeous all this barber pulling and it's 100 percent merino and it's so squishy like look at this <laughs> beautiful so that i'm so excited about i just love it but i do not want to learn to spin zero zero interest let someone else do that work and uh yeah zero interest i mean then, i admire those that do it but no thank you exactly exactly i appreciate it definitely um i don't know a month or so ago maybe a little longer so frankie gray fibers i've ordered from them before i get my okay. little oysters out of frankie gray fibers quite love it and they're very good about putting up color combos so they have some color combos for um, one of Hosey's recent sweaters. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she just shared some different color combos one day, and I saw this combo. Oops. That's just a card. There, we'll go like this. Oh, that's so there's a uh, dark blue, which is called Indigo, and a gray, and this really weird green, swampy green. I like green. that green. And then I ordered two of these, and there was a lighter one, than this mm -hmm. but I, I i didn't order that i just ordered two of these so i would love to do um something with color work with this combo that's pretty yes just i don't know that day i saw it and i thought i want that i love this green it's called it's grass the, uh, oh that's cool so she, she may still have these combos they were on the uh Frankie Gray Fibers Instagram, so you can always go back and look at it. Um, mm -hmm. 
but they weren't a set. They were just suggestions. So yeah, they have a really good knack for putting together combinations of colors that look great That's together. Cool. That you wouldn't, yeah. yeah, you wouldn't normally think. Um, but that's, yeah, that's about it because we don't have any giveaways ending. I thought mm. we could do a little something. I was ordering a few things from Timber Yarns and while I was at it, I ordered a few little extra things. So she has these, um, they're, uh, what do you call it? The printing, uh, 3D printed mini sock blocks. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So they're they're done on a 3D printer. And uh I just love these little hearts. And so they're for kids or babies, babies socks. Yeah, baby socks. Baby socks. But they're just adorable. And then she has all these really cute different um stitch stoppers, like needle stoppers. Right. Yeah. So aren't these adorable for spring? Little ducks and little bees. That's cool. So um if you would like to win these actually comment anyway but just comment we will just pick you don't have to use a special word yeah. we'll pick from all the commenters if you don't want to win put it in your comment um and then we'll just pick someone else but otherwise we'll do a random next time we podcast we'll do a random comment picker and we'll pick that, no i think that's cute the little yeah. is it the flat is it the flat rubber duck yeah, the flat ones. I got the flat ones because I thought it'll be cheaper to ship. <laughs> yeah, I got um, I got the three D ones to go with the Jeep. She had some really cute little stitch stoppers. There's these little sheep. Oh, I thought were so cute. Oh, I got I got ones that are uh, they're little bombs and they say F on them, F bomb. <laughs> and then remember um, the Homer. Her, I have her those stuff. too. Yeah, these are like Here, the Homer. One sec. I got these ones. They're whoops. They're cows, <laughs> and they say, um, "Not my pasture, not my cow, not my." I can't say it because then we'll got get in trouble. <laughs> um, I got a lot of the ones that were not IT guy approved. <laughs> oh, okay, sweary ones. Yeah, I got these because of my strange obsession with healing cows. Those are cute. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, she has a lot. Yeah. Yeah. See, these are the ducks that I got to go with the Jeep. Yeah. I saw those. And I know. I also, I... For, for myself, I ordered, she has cardinals and they're, they're really nice. Right. They were cute. I thought of you when I saw those. Yeah. I saw a cardinal a couple weeks ago. I heard him in the tree right behind my yard. I heard him and looked up and yeah, there he was looking for a girlfriend. <laughs> looking for a honey. Um, no, we've had a couple of them here. Right. Yeah. Cause we're still cold, right? Yeah. Here's the. Oh, cute. Those are cute. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all. That's it. That's um, all she wrote. Yeah. Keep on crocheting, keep on knitting. Right. Uh, stick around. We have our show your FO slideshow. Yes. Yes. Our, all of our Ravelry group um, makers mm -hmm. who've submitted their pictures on the thread in our Ravelry group. Um, and uh, it's it's just really inspiring. Sometimes you get you see something that you hadn't noticed. And, right. Uh, yeah. And even yeah. if you don't, so if you don't want to watch the slideshow, just go into the Ravelry thread and have yeah. a look through the. Um, okay, yeah, remember to comment below for our next episode. And I guess that's it, Lisa. That's it. That's all she wrote. Yeah. My goodness. Thanks, for watching. Thanks. Take care. Happy okay. knitting. Make time. make time to make something. <laughs> <laughs>